before I start presenting, I just wanted to tell a personal thing. I actually started my first day studying in this building. I was sitting somewhere up there. We had the principal here uh, welcoming all the new students. Anyway, enough about uh, my emotions. I just wanted to start with a question. So who here is excited about long reads? Come on, we can do better than that. Let's try again. Who here is excited about long reads? Wow. Perfect. So today I'll give you some overview of uh, Bio. I know that some in this group already know quite a lot. However, it will be kind of a journey of where the company has been, where we're headed, and uh, what's coming up next. Starting just briefly with our mission, I think it's important to say that we want to enable the promise of genomics to better human health. And if you notice the cho choice of words, we want to enable. So we rely on you, the scientists, to use our tools and really have that groundbreaking science. Now, how do we do that? By creating what we believe is the most advancing sequencing technologies. And we constantly try to push forward, innovate, and find new solutions so you can uh, have your discoveries in science. So, just a couple of words on the, ba the company, how we evolved, started in 2000, uh, where, when the company was founded, but there are some key milestones uh, that really shape the company and where we are today. Starting with the R launch of the RS1, that's when we first saw kilobases of length uh, fragments. And then we had a couple of uh, instruments uh, launched through the development. But the real, uh, let's see if I can find the laser. Yeah, the real big change happened here in 2019 when we introduced the hi fi sequencing. So we went away from long inaccurate reads to having long and highly accurate reads in pair with short reads and in some cases even slightly more accurate then following that we had some reorganization in the company and i think this is very important to highlight because with that we also got uh, christian henry our new ceo was successfully uh, able to uh, secure a lot of investment. So we, as a company, was in a better position to invest, to innovate and find new solutions and uh, sequencing technologies for you. So with that, it came looking at 2021 until uh, 2022. It came a major uh, different innovations and uh, changes. We had improvements in the hi-fi, we acquired two different companies, Omnion and uh, uh, Circulomics. Omnion was for our short read SPB technology and Circulomics for uh, extraction and uh, DNA isolation. We launched our first kitted solution. We made improvements on Hi-Fi, but most importantly, in the, by the end of the year, in 2022, we launched the Revio system, which was a game changer. So we were, with this instrument, we were able to lower the price, but also increase the throughput. And actually, I'm happy to say that this group organizing this event today was one of the first, not only in Europe, but globally, to acquire the system. They're part of SciLife Lab, and it's nice to see that the SciLife Lab concepts actually work, having uh, the latest technology to the scientists. Moving forward, in 2023, we started shipping the system, the Revio. We launched some new tools, PB Fusion. Uh, we also started shipping our short read technology platform. I'll not spend too much time there. I know this is a long read meeting. But if you want to hear more about our short read, you can also come to the booth and speak with us. We acquired Apton, which is a, 
a company to be able to develop, continue developing high throughput short reads. And also we launched some new softwares in, in the end of 2023, making adaptive loading, run previews, and uh, allowing smart insert size. In 2024, there have also been some innovations. We launched the Pure Target, which is our uh, crisp cast based uh, target enrichment method. So you kind of really get the best of the both words. You retain methylation, you don't introduce any PCR bias, but you get to do uh, targeted sequencing. We also did major improvements on automation. Uh, not spend so much time there, but we automated both the extraction, but also the library prep. Had some uh, in new uh, initiatives like the colors, uh, new kits like the Nanobind and so on. But I'll not spend not too much time. You probably can find this information uh, on, uh, on our webpage, but you see that there's an empty slot for Q4 2024. Unfortunately, today I will not be able to share many of those details due to the, due to, due to the timing, but, I'll, but please keep your eyes and ears open. There are very exciting news to come shortly. Okay, so where are we today? We have multiple platforms. We are only company offering both short and long read sequencing. We, are, we have seven offices with the European one in London. I know, our, ironically, UK is not part of Europe, but our European office is in London. We have around 600 employees around the globe and more than 1,200 sequencers out there in the field and more than 10,000 publications. And we get the question, so you're a long read company, how come do you do also short reads? And I'll give you a short answer to that, because we strongly believe that for many of the applications that currently have, have been dominated by short reads, is a better fit to do on long reads, like whole genome sequencing, like rare disease research and those kind of things. You, you just get a better picture of a genome. You get methylation, you get the full length uh, DNA, However, with that said, we still believe that there are areas where short reads, especially high accurate short reads, has its place. And those, a couple of examples are like cancer recurrence monitoring, early stage cancer screening, and really those applications where we have fragmented DNA and really want to look at the quality and having high accuracy. Also just wanted to say that even if I speak, I will speak mostly in human, in the human market, human genomics, uh, we do serve uh, all types of uh, applications like oncology, plant and animal and microbiology. So we also have an emerging market. So basically everything that doesn't fit in the other sections, we put them there. couple of initiatives in the long uh, long read and in the human space we have the colors db which is a frequency database of variants for long reads to help to distinguish common from rare uh, and this is we have over 1400 genomes from multiple global institutions and standardized pipelines for structure variants smvs and in in those unfamiliar reads Another very interesting initiative is the Hi-Fi Folds. And I know there are many here in this group that are already part of this. And uh, we'll see if there's room for more, but actually our market lead for this project, Sequinder, is here today. So if you have any question of, on this uh, very nice initiative, please come forward and speak with her at the booth. Uh, so basically the mission of this initiative is to support the global adoption of long read sequencing and also accelerate genomic discoveries to basically having a scientific community grounded on shared knowledge. And as you see, there are some examples here. Uh, we do have one for each of the 
Amiga AMR and APAC, but for the European one, which is the most relevant for this group, we do have some very familiar names also represented in this group, but also that will give us a talk uh, during those co coming few days. Some large initiatives using PAC biosequencing. Um, we have the Estonian National Biobank, who said could pack bio to sequence 10,000 genomes. We have the All of Us program in the US that is using long reads as well as some uh, other uh, collaborations with Redbound, uh, with GeneDx. Uh, so there is a lot of things going on uh, in, the, in the long read uh, pack biospace. A slide on coverage, because we get the, a lot of questions on the coverage. How does uh, a 30x genome stand? And just to move away from the 30x genome, that 30x genome was set as a standard for short reads. It's not necessarily the standard for long reads, especially not high active long reads like PacBio. So this is a graph showing that a 50% in reduction in sequencing coverage actually only results in 10% decline in the potential fold rate. And I know my colleague, Mike, will present some nice slides on this uh, on Wednesday. So uh, I encourage you also to stay tuned and listen to his speak. So basically our 30X read, short read genome, uh, a 50X could show a still a higher increase in yield compared to short reads. I know many of you know already about what back by long reads is, but for, for the benefit of the dot and for the new ones here, I'll just show a quick illustration on how it's actually done. So we circleize the DNA and sequence the same fragment over and over again. And that in combination with having a highly randomized error profile, so non-systematic error, uh, ma uh, makes the consensus read a uh, very high accurate read and we're able to wash away all the errors. So this is for the analytics in this group, for those who really want to see the numbers, but you see here the number of passes on the right hand side and how the predicted quality score. So we need three subreads to get Q20. And just saying that everything below Q20 is being scrapped, so we're not using it. We don't bother. We have so good quality that we're only using the uh, above Q20. Couple of words on methylation. So, as you know, methylation is something that comes with packet biosequencing free of charge, and we do that by just measuring the time it takes between incorporations. So looking at the genetics of uh, the nucleotides that are being incorporated. No additional library prep, no additional cost, free of charge with the sequencing. Also wanted to tell you about what does the long read enable. So if you look at human genomics, the whole genome sequencing with short reads, we all know that it does a pretty good job or a very good job at SMBs and small indels. However, with PacBio, you can also look at structural variations. You look at methylation, segmental duplications, phasing a uh, haplotype, in addition to SMBs. So it's a comprehensive method. You don't need to combine two different methods to make it work. You have one that does it all. So basically, you're getting a reference quality genome. You're, you can do complete telomere to telomere assemblies and you look, can look at all known variant classes. So that's why we believe that not all genome sequence is, data is created equally and that PacBio delivers a new class of whole genome sequencing. And don't take my word for it. I hope you will see some of the presentations in the coming three days. That really shows you uh, the power of Hi-Fi and pac sequencing. So, a couple of things on our value chain. So, as you know, pac strength core is in library prep, sequencing, and analyzing. And with the acquisition of uh, circulomics, we kind of moved into sample prep as well. 
However, we, we understand that it's important to have the ecosystem around that. So that's why we have partnered with uh, different vendors on something that we call the compatible, like very compatible program. And you see here a couple of examples of companies that we're working together with just to give you that ecosystem, uh, because we understand that it's just more than sequencing and the library prep, the parts that we offer. And just so you know, we're con constantly working on this. So there are actually many companies there that are not on this list uh, because it, I think it's a couple of months uh, old. Okay. So where are we headed? I gave you a nice outlook of the you know, history of BackBio, where we started, how we moved into recapitalizing the company, securing funding that really gave us in the, put us in the position to be able to invest, innovate, and create new solutions for you. But what does that mean in terms of what's the next? And just to set the expectations right, I'll not reveal what's coming. I'll give you some hinge and I'll leave you with a cliffhanger. But starting with where we are today, as you know, we have the Revia system that's on market today. High throughput, sequencer for uh, uh, high active long reads. We have the Onzo system, ultra high uh, accuracy with for a mid throughput short read sequencer. But we are developing now currently a benchtop hi-fi. This is in development and is about to be released soon. But on top of that, we're also developing a population scale hi-fi system that will look at tens of thousands of genomes per year. And last but not least, we're also working on a high throughput short read sequencer for the Q40 plus reads. It's written Q40 here, but actually, if you look at some of the data, we're closer to Q50. So very, very high accurate short read. And continue to work on cloud connectivity and partnering with uh, some of the third party vendors to make uh, the ecosystem around that. Continue working on kitted end to end solution. So you don't have to do the R&D. You have fully commercialized products that you can just uh, take from day one and, and, and use it, as well as continue working on informatic tools. And with that, just on time, I thank you all. And yeah, thank you for your time.